Hey everybody, welcome to the most amazing Karukan video that you have ever seen because today I'm gonna be showing you how to get a checkmate in 7 moves with a Karukan and uh, that happens uh, after the moves e4, c6, d4, d5 and why it goes for the fantasy variation by playing f3 which is quite a common response in lower rated games I would say and in the first part of the video I'm gonna be showing you the main theory the stuff that you need to know and in the second part of the video I'm gonna be playing a couple of games against my subscribers trying to highlight specific typical mistakes for different rating ranges so without further introduction the first important move that you need to remember once swipe goes for the fantasy by playing f3 we want to get our pawn into the center by going for e5 and this way we're setting up a little bait it looks like we're giving white a free pawn and the most common move is uh, d takes on e5 but what we actually achieve with this move after white plays f3 you can notice that this whole diagonal has been uh, weakened pretty badly and uh, now i actually recommend you go for another pretty unnatural move because according to the basic rules of chess you're not supposed to develop the queen this early on in the game but i think uh, one of the best moves in this position it is queen b6 preparing to put pressure on this diagonal and giving another bait for white and the most common uh, move for white still according to the, the database here is to simply go e captions on d5 taking another free pawn and we can simply continue with uh, bishop to c5 developing and attacking the g1 knight and already in this position why well, doesn't really have an easy decision to make what is going to end up happening in most of your games if you reach this position white is simply gonna try to keep their knight by playing the move 92 which is actually going to be leading to a first mate after bishop to f2 check only move for white king to d2 and then black has checkmate in uh, one move with queen to e3 and the white king has no squares so this is the main trap that you want to take away from this video this is happening very frequently, anywhere between uh, 500 and uh, even 1800 in rapid. I had one of my students that is rated around 1700 in rapid and uh, got this position in the very first game he played. So definitely big odds for you to get into this position. So this is just the course setup. You want to really remember this. If there's anything that you want to remember from this video, it's going for the e5 move, giving away the pawn and then going for this queen b6 followed by bishop c5 trying to put pressure on the weakened diagonal. Now, we've seen the move 92, where uh, black is able to get a forced uh, checkmate. Now, you may be wondering, okay, but how about they go with the knight on the edge? Simply by going knight h3. And against this, this is still not really looking uh, that appealing for white because we have a move that is bishop captures on h3, doubling up uh, white's pawns, and then we can throw in the check. This time, if they go uh, with the king to d2 once again, same pattern will apply. We have queen to e3 checkmate, but additionally, white has a bit of a better move, which is king to e2. And now, we cannot go queen e3 because the bishop covers that square, but we can simply continue with uh, c takes on d5. Most likely we're gonna see a move like uh, knight to c3, king the pawn on d5. And here, important to remember, if you ever reach this position, strong move, simply going bishop to d4. Hitting the knight and also the e5 pawn. Setting up another trap, because if uh, white uh, takes the poison pawn, black has a winning move. You can simply go queen b5, taking the enemy king from e2. And we're gonna be picking up d5 next on the very next move with a winning position. So, what is actually a better move for uh, white after bishop to d4? They could play f4, supporting e5, and after knight e7, king f3, we can eliminate the knight, doubling up uh, white's pawns, followed by uh, castle, can continue with knight c6, knight f5, uh, with a double-edged position that should be equal according to the computer, but I find it much trickier to play for white with uh, such a vulnerable king. So this is pretty much what you need to know if uh, white is going to be answering e5 with uh, d takes on e5. Now couple of moves could uh, also be played besides d takes on e5 which is by far the main move and what i expect you to face the most and in this position why could also go for e takes on d5 for example another pretty uh, topical move but we have a pretty simple way to deal with this there are many playable moves uh, for black but i think the easiest one is just to go for queen h4 with the simple idea that uh, after uh, the move g3 we are taking the pawn from d4 and we simply get a very nice end game after queen takes d4 pawn takes d4 this is the position that uh, will be featured in one of the upcoming games against one of my subscribers so if you're interested to see how uh, this game could go make sure to stick to that part of the video and uh, yeah just to 
briefly mention Blackout continue with Knight F6. On D takes, we are always happy to take with a Knight. And yes, we do have the uh, isolated pawn in that position, but Black is very active and these pawns are looking really clumsy here. We can, uh, let's say, the three squares and I think just Black is very solid in general in this endgame. So, ED5, there's an easy reply. Another move that white could go for here is bishop to e3, which uh, has been played against myself and it's simply leading to, yeah, just winning a pawn for black. Most likely after d e4, white is simply gonna go f takes e4 and then we have a queen to h4 check, which is another very nice trap, simply picking up the e4 pawn and uh, black is simply better thanks to the extra pawn in this position. So one last thing that uh, I think it's good to mention before we move on to the game against uh, my viewers. If white goes for uh, knight to c3, we have d takes on e4, and already white is facing a big decision because the most uh, common move, f takes e4, is simply uh, losing. After ed4, black is winning uh, free pawn and uh, we have a much better position. Can play c5 and knight c6 on the very next move, continue developing, and black should have no uh, problems uh, converting this. So it would be a better move for them to meet uh, d takes on e4 with uh, d takes on e5. But still, after queen d1, knight takes on d1, and now I like the move knight to d7, letting white to take because here uh, black would be very comfortable uh, playing against the isolated pawn. And in case white tries the, let's say, trickier approach with f4, trying to cover e5, we have this very strong move f6 because we're lacking a little bit of space. And after this move, white is pretty much forced to go uh, pawn takes on e6 allowing knight takes on f6 and uh, black is very comfortable can continue with knight b6 bishop f5 bishop c5 can castle either way and black has a very easy game and additionally to this line you may be wondering but okay what if after f6 white is trying to be more aggressive and plays e6 hitting our knight we're going to be playing knight c5 now only move for white to protect the pawn is to advance with f5 now we simply start this kind of undermining game that is fairly typical in many openings, such as the Queen's Gambit, let's say, that comes to mind. We can go g6, and let's say if white takes, we're going to be taking back, and the pawn is uh, uh, simply going to be lost on e6. And in case they try to keep these pawns together, we have another undermining move, which is h5. Now, if they take the free pawn, we take on g4, win the one on e6, slowly we will pick up g6, and uh, black is already much better. And the problem for white in this variation is that now uh, h3 is not really a good move because of hg and then uh, they are unable to recapture because of the pin along the h file. So black would simply be winning here, flattening to take one f5 and then picking up white's pawns uh, one by one. So with that being said, I think this is more than enough against the fantasy variation from a theoretical point of view. And I think it's simply time to move on to the games and try to spot together some of the typical mistakes that uh, my subscribers are making based on their uh, rating range. Okay guys, we're getting a game with a black piece against a 567 in blades. So we already agreed that he's gonna be playing the fantasy and <clears throat> now he can do whatever from this position. So we're gonna be trying the line from the video, going for the twisted fantasy, going e5. And let's see his response. I think most of the people are gonna yeah, just grab the pawn on e5. Why am I not allowed to draw any arrows? So there's something wrong with uh, my board. Yeah, there you have it. So he plays knight c3 instead, okay? This is not something that I'm familiar with. It's first time I'm actually seeing this. And let's try to react against it, I guess. So <clears throat> gives knight c3. First thing that I'm considering is ed. Now, d4 is another move and i think we're gonna stick with that just because we're opening up queen's path to the d4 pawn so he has to do something about it maybe bishop e3 is a move just to protect it because after knight x on e4 we could be collecting the d4 pawn with the queen and just try to play uh, yeah an end game with an extra pawn could also take with a pawn trying to make it a little bit more interesting. Usually I would recommend you take with a queen to get it into the end game, but uh, I feel like maybe queen d4, bishop d3, my queen could potentially end up being a target, so I feel like playing it this way is uh, better. You see a bishop c4 move, and against this I'm considering to simply try and finish my development with knight f6. Now, question is what to do on knight g5, hitting the f7 spot, which is little bit vulnerable not too much but definitely a little bit vulnerable it could be 
Against that, there's like a knight d5 move, just blocking uh, bishop's path, but then uh, d4 pawn is gonna be like a little bit hanging. So, if I wanna avoid that, I could start with bishop e7, stopping knight g5, and then knight f6, followed by castling. And to me, it looks like we're gonna be keeping the extra pawn, so I think I'm just gonna be doing that. Bishop e7, and the ace to do this, he doesn't have like a quick way to attack f7, and against knight e2, that is attacking d4. I'm thinking to simply support the default pawn with c5. And then simply try to finish my development, keep the extra pawn, get myself castle, have a safe king, and then looking forward to, uh, yeah, get the conversion. Where can I find the game against uh, Dina Belenkaya? That is actually a very good uh, question in the chat, uh, Radu. Let me actually link you to that so yeah by the way guys for those of you that are going to be watching this video as well if you haven't checked out my game against uh dina belenkaya the link is in the chat right now and it will be in the description so make sure to check that one out and okay opponent simply castling gonna be playing knight of six idea to castle finish my development and we do have the extra pawn i'm a little bit down on time so i'm getting uh, a little bit below three minutes which is i think still reasonable thinking about the fact that uh, we spent a little bit of time just to figure out the best way to develop and then we're gonna be playing a little bit faster since the position will become easier so 96 simply protecting my pawn waiting for cd cd gonna be castling short otherwise 9g5 is no longer that effective as we're gonna be castling do not take 24 for no reason because you're simply opening up rook's path so you don't want to be giving your opponent these kind of little advantages for no reason. Yes, trading is fine when you're up material, but you want to trade in a way that uh, you're keeping your position good, if that makes any sense. Because you want to trade as long as you're not conceding anything. If you have to make concessions, it's usually bad. So now I think we just take here. It's going to end up taking a central pawn, but I think it's not really going to matter that much because we can just castle. Again, CB, thinking to simply take it with a bishop on knight takes on f6. I can take back with a queen. Uh, I think that is completely fine. I can take with a knight, but then d4 is kind of hanging, which I'm not really a huge fan of. I can also kind of ignore it and, uh, you know. I think we're ignoring it, guys. I think when you're up a pawn and, you know, you still have your king in the middle, even though maybe taking here was fine, just as a general kind of rule, you want to get used to this thing that you stop being greedy. See, he goes b5, it's not an issue. We can centralize, gain a tempo, still have extra pawn, great position, and we make sure our king is safe. This is like the main priority. So, yeah, I hope this is somewhat instructive. Um, hitting this, if he takes with a queen, I think we can just trade and win a piece because the bishop will remain undefended. If he takes with a knight, then... Yeah, same problem, bishop hangs, so might have to play bishop b3, but then d3 seems to be a little bit annoying at least. I could also take, so he just takes with a knight, which is, uh, yeah, overlooking the fact that I'm attacking his bishop. I think the position already was um, quite difficult objectively, but this makes it even, uh, even easier, of course. With the extra piece now, because we're having an extra piece, you may be wondering, okay, what do we do next? Okay, so... You're having an extra piece, we should be looking forward to trade as many pieces as you can. I'm pretty sure you've heard this before, but you do want to keep an eye on making any possible exchanges. Yeah, but make sure you exchange without making such big concessions, because sure, most of the times trading will uh, yeah make it very easy, but sometimes trading can also backfire if, let's say, you trade your good pieces for his bad pieces. So, I mean, those situations are, in general quite obvious it's not really any kind of like rocket science you really figure it out whether you want to trade it or not so i don't think you need like a separate video about that kind of topic but um yeah i think we're just gonna keep exchanging in this um yeah by the way guys for those of you that are still sending challenges to uh to play be part of this video keep them up i'm gonna be taking them next not going anywhere not, but not gonna be closing the stream at least <laughs> Not that I know of, and uh, yeah, just gonna be using a little bit of a tactical trick, pinning the knight, giving away on the c4 knight for now, because we're gonna be winning it uh, back and keeping the extra piece, so. Mm. He also doesn't have an easy time defending, because as you can see, 
while I discovering both places where the bishop could protect. So after bishop f4, I'm just going to be trading queens because I could take with a bishop, but always you want to trade queens with the extra piece. You want to get it into the end game, trade all the pieces, and then, uh, yeah, get it. Let your opponent only with the king alone. For sure, you're not going to be losing when he only has the king. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Going to pick up the queen as well. I guess opponent forgot about it, but it's not a problem. Following you on Insta. Love your content. Thank you for that, Ayman. Appreciate it. That is why you guys as well should follow my Insta if you haven't. You're going to get a lot of sexy picture of myself in your face. Okay, I'm kidding. I never post, but you should follow. So I'm going to go queen e4, hitting g2. Now approaching checkmate. So still it's about trading, but since we have such a such a huge lead in uh, development, I'm definitely down to start creating some threats. Again, it's not like really the main thing that I, I'm going to be prioritizing in these scenarios, but now with the extra queen, it's much easier to make threats. And uh, opponents also finds the resign button. This is a saying that we have, and yeah, I like to thank my opponent for the game, participating in the dish challenge. Even though he's only 500 rated, we're really encouraging people to, uh, yeah, play more chess, and they're going to improve slowly, as long as they <laughs> enjoy what they're doing and keep playing. So thank you for the game, opponent, and I think we can look for other challenges. So next... I'm not sure if the Savage Knight is uh, still around, but okay, looks like he is. And uh, we're going to be getting another fantasy game, it looks like. So going to be going for the Karo Khan and uh, going to be trying the Twisted Fantasy. Actually, are we going to get the E5 at all? Like that is the most common move by far, in my opinion. But we saw everything except that. And looks like we get it in this game. And I'm going to start with uh, Queen to B6. Dirty little move, inviting ED5. Are we gonna get to see this? No, we see simply knight c3, which is actually best line, but I'm gonna hit him with a deadly trap, attacking the knight. Now, what is the savage knight gonna do about the g1 knight? The knight almost has no squares, so can either go to e2. Or to h3, but on h3, it looks like the bishop can take it, so. Not so sure what to say about developing the knight to such square. Definitely going to be grabbing it. And we actually get to see the main trap on the board after bishop f2. There is only one king move. And, yeah, he's going to go to d2. And we get to show the power of this, uh, of this line. Because queen to e3, it is actually a checkmate that is the uh, main idea of uh, of our trap it's like really tricky for <laughs> white already to play at that point after queen to b6 bishop c5 knight h3 is bad because of bishop takes the only decent move is knight a4 for white in this position so uh, yeah pretty happy that we get to see the main trap on the board which a lot of my students have gotten in their games already <laughs> so thank you for letting this happen the the savage knight who are we taking? And by the way, I see John B that you're mentioning this King's Indian line. Uh, what do I think of the 96-97? I looked it up, but uh, okay, I think it's interesting. Pretty tricky. Objectively quite dubious. I think you're just lost. But uh, I think it's interesting. So for Blitz, I like it. I'll follow if you play a match against me. That sounds like a challenge. What's your Insta? I'm kidding. I'm not going to follow. <laughs> That's not how it works. Just stay in the line, okay? We've got a bunch of people. There's like five people that are sending challenges. It's not like a thousand, so. <laughs> uh, okay, actually it's six now, so I, I lied. But we're going to keep taking them in order of increasing rating. So we had the 500 now, 800 rated opponent. So we're getting a new game. This time uh, opponent rated 800. So let's see how he's going to be dealing with, uh, yeah. Or a little uh, line against the fantasy. So we agreed on him playing the fantasy. I'm just going to hit him with a twisted fantasy variation. And see how he's going to react. We see e takes on d5, which is interesting. Normally you'd expect the e5 from white. But 
we see this point capture. And there is not that much fury in this position. You could play many things. But I think easiest is just to give this check. Because now that the e-pawn took, the path towards the d4 square has been cleared. And we can simply go for this endgame with at least equality. So I usually think about it just, way, just this way. If they go ed, there is queen h4. We pick up on d4. And that should be... At least equal. Just take it from there, okay? Um, just play a game of chess. You can't win all of them from the opening, but as long as you get, you know, this kind of position, computer keeps it equal. I think it's much harder to, to play for white in general here. So, picking with a pawn, looks like we have a little bit of a, um, yeah, a little bit of a lead in development as well. Expecting DC6. I'm gonna be taking with a knight in that case. We see bishop f4 by opponent. Developing, I'm gonna take on d5. It's not like the best pawn of all time, but it's a pawn at the end of the day. If we can play knight c6, I'm gonna be quite happy because I don't think he has an easy way to regain that pawn. So, just gonna play that, try to support. Expect him to long castle the way he played it. There it goes. Just gonna keep developing knights uh, before bishops, usually. If he checks me, I think I'm just gonna block with the bishop. C knight b3. Trying to regain the pawn, which is most likely going to happen because I don't see a way now uh, to keep that pawn, which is normal. It was like a double pawn. You shouldn't expect it to last for like so long. I'm just going to go bishop e6 though. Keep developing, expecting knight e4. We see bishop to b5. That's actually <clears throat> my opponent's playing much better than his usual rating, I have to say. He's been really hitting me up with this kind of developing uh, with tempo kind of ideas. So I think I'm just going to use my rook now to the open file. Expecting knight d4 to happen sooner or later. Just going to go, uh, yeah, okay, knight takes on d4. This is what we get. Um, yeah, I could play bishop c5. I could... Uh, Play bishop e7 as well. More of a fan of bishop c5 just because we're attacking the knight. Putting a little bit of pressure. So let's see. Hitting the knight on d4. Expecting some kind of knight e2 and then I'm going to be probably castling. Trying to get, get out of the center. If knight e6 I think taking is fine. We get like a pretty... Uh, nice pawn structure now. We kind of improved it a little bit. Um, yeah, we no longer have the isolated pawn and have an easy way to castle. Then potentially looking forward to knight before ideas. Maybe trying to attack on the queen side. See rook e1. You can throw in this move if I want to be annoying, but there's going to be rook f1, so... Don't see such a great follow-up afterwards. Um, I think a6, bishop d3, knight b4. Definitely something to be considered. Maybe even uh, a6, bishop d3, e5. Trying to grab the center. Mm, definitely I have more than one way to play this. But I like a6. May see even bishop takes, which I think I'm going to just take with a rook. So, that could follow up with knight d4. I'll be forced to take because pawn on e6 is hanging. Takes with the rook. I can double up. Most likely cc3. And I think we have a pretty balanced position. He just goes back, which I think is uh, maybe an inaccuracy because the bishop feels a little passive there after b5. Only move bishop b3. Could think of further expanding or I could play uh, knight a5. I think with knight e5 is kind of giving away d4 square, which I'm not so sure that I'm ready for. But I think we start with bishop f2, misplacing uh, the rook a little bit to f1, and then we drop back to b6. And it looks like I'm just moving back and forth like a monkey, but bishop was on c5 last time, and I'm trying to make the argument that we have opened up the file, which um, may help a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go knight a5, not only playing for the cheap trick knight xb3, utilizing the pin, but also preparing knight to c4. <laughs> we saw you uh, eyeballing the chat. Okay, my chat is mocking me now for uh, ignoring the questions and focusing on the game. 
That's my bad. <laughs> but I'm gonna get back to you uh, in between games, so don't worry. <laughs> so expecting bishop a2 now. And then knight c4, bishop takes. Probably rook takes and just looking forward to double up. That would be the plan. Yeah, knight e3 could be an idea now. So I'm just gonna take with the rook, keep the open file, preparing to double up. If b3, just rook back to c6. Got a little target on c2, so I feel like c2 pawn is weaker than the one on e6, so we may be having a little bit of an initiative, objectively speaking, already. Expecting now c3 move. Wondering if there is direct win with d4. Mm, d4, knight, d5 looks very tempting. d4, bishop, e5, maybe only move. That's kind of interesting for him. Like knight, d5, bishop takes d4. Yeah, that looks fine for him. So the other way is just a5, b4 and go for minority attack. Hmm, I think I like a5, just uh, going for a... the more like sort of thematic, you always need to consider these kind of concrete ideas. And now, while there is b4, just going for a slightly better game, we actually have a tactic. So you can even try to pause the video and find uh, the clear win for black in this position because with g4 now the bishop on f4 is a little bit loose we have rook f4 followed by bishop e3 and it's not like winning the house but we're winning two pieces for the rook which is big advantage in general most of uh, the position he has no pawns even so we just need to um, yeah being active. If I play e5, there is g5 and d5 pawn drops, so I want to be super careful. That's why I'm going to play king f7. And next up, I think we can look for ways to improve the knight. Like knight d7, okay, rook f, rook d4, hitting f4 bishop. Now e5 could be a move, winning a tempo, and then need to protect d5. I could also just step back with a bishop, could play bishop g3, trying to win the pawn. I think I like bishop g3, just hitting these two things. And after rook h1, that's expected to try to maneuver the knight. That could be a plan. He's giving me this, which I think we'll gladly accept. Three pawns are general welcome, but then rook h1 is a move. So maybe I want to listen a little bit to my own advice and not be that greedy. So not super sure if I want to take there. I think I'm just going to go bishop e5. Hitting the rook and then going for like direct attack with uh, b4. I think that's the most promising way to do it. Even though I might be temporarily giving up a pawn, I think we have very good initiative because we're opening up the lines. Gonna play rook b8, threatening to take, give f4, bishop d6, then knight e4. So, okay, rook to e1, hitting the bishop, so I'll have to step back to d6. Threatening to win back the pawn. If g5, okay, he just goes there. Okay, there is bishop b4, hitting the rook, and we have a pretty nice threat. So rook c1 is kind of only move now for him. Threatening rook c7 as well. So let's see. Plays rook d3. Unfortunately, forgetting about the rook, which we're going to be collecting. But the position, I think, was... Uh, quite uh, quite good, nevertheless, even without the blunder. And uh, opponents, yeah, shows the respect by resigning. And yeah, we managed to get another, hopefully, instructive win. So <clears throat> thank you, opponent, for sending in the challenge and taking place to this, getting another game. And opponent rated 1,100 this time. So... Let's see if he can handle the fantasy properly. Specifically the twisted fantasy after e5. So expecting the e5 as the main move. Now, what I'm going in a little bit of a thing. And there we have it. Gonna go queen b6. Just a random queen move, it seems. But trying to exploit the fact that this early f3 move has weakened this diagonal big time. So we play e5, sacrificing the pawn. And the point is to play queen b6. And now, it is not going to be so easy for white to deal with this. Now, honestly, most common move that you will see is ed5. Taking the seemingly looking free pawn. 
when I'm playing Quinito. Gonna go bishop c5. Anyways, hitting the knight. Opponent not gonna have an easy time <laughs> protecting it. And he goes knight c3. I think we're allowed to take that. He probably either did not see it or did not find a good way for it. He's trying to hit me with a counterattack. So if I move the queen, he can take the bishop. That's a clever idea, but I have check. And then I'm uh, able to save the bishop in time. So opponent was a bit tricky, but not tricky enough, it seems. He's forced to play knight c3, but I'm in time to just rescue the bishop. I could also go d4. In both are fine. Even like d4 better, just because we are creating some pressure on the on the diagonal. Bishop d4, bishop d2 was perfectly playable and still very much winning, but this felt more in control, so to speak. But, okay. When you have a choice between two winning moves, it's not really that big of a deal. You choose the one that feels easier to play for you. So... Expecting rook takes on g1, there's not really much of a choice. Gonna be taking and b3 like only move to avoid disaster. There's a huge frat in the position. And... After b3, I think it's time to just collect another pawn. So we're up a piece and that is a clean piece. Opponent does not even have one single pawn for it, so... We to c4, you can take on h2 and that rook is almost getting trapped. You can just play knight uh, f6, you know, trying to finish development, no need to go greedy. As I usually say, preparing to castle short. Putting going bishop a3, which is a clever idea, trying to keep me with a king in the middle, teaching me some basic concepts of the game. You love to see it. Now... Because of that, I could be <laughs> really greedy, try to take, hitting the rook. What else? Yeah, I think I've got something. I think I've got bishop e6, and against queen to b4. Oh, I think I actually might have messed it up a little bit. I fought on queen before there was uh, 95. But realize there is queen b7. Maybe there is queen d4 and I'm like completely winning, but it's getting very messy. After queen d3, should be definitely easy win, just by playing knight bd7. Preparing long castle. And let's see. He does go long castle himself. Mm. Still, this is always free to take, but then bishop e2. I think I've got a great idea now. Queen a5. Oh, the problem is there is queen d6 and he's defending and threatening mate. However, I've got c5. Yeah, that should be good. That should be good, but... I think I'm just gonna castle just for the sake of simplicity. I don't want to get you guys in, like, <laughs> risky positions for no reason. I can play in with the king in the middle. Not so sure you can do the same. So, decided to castle. Keep it simple. I'm gonna sidestep his threat. I think pawn on a2, expecting king b1, and then maybe simply going knight e5. Okay, he goes a3, but now we've got a great trap. Knight c5, pinning the bishop, hitting the queen, and interfering this uh, bishop diagonal. So this is huge threat. I think opponent is at least going to be dropping the queen. So let's see how he's going to react against this uh, knight c5 move. Okay, we see queen to e3, which is avoiding the threat against the queen, but... There's nothing to stop. Queen takes on a3 and it's going to be a force mate on the very next move. Queen to b2 will uh, end up being a checkmate. So my opponent simply resigns and we get another win with this um, really nasty e5 twisted fantasy. So thank you for the game, Dyer. And yeah, okay, I'm just going to be taking a little bit of a harder challenge this time because my opponent is 1700 from the UK. Let's see his handling of the fantasy. We're going to be doing the same e5 gambit. And we see knight c3. Going to be using this uh, d4 idea once again. 
putting pressure on d4. That is the main point. He just goes bishop e2, which is a little bit of an improved line, yeah? Now playing it like a gambit, sort of. So, uh, I can go ef. I can go ed. I've got many, many moves. Um, I can go bishop b4 as a trap. I'm going to play it as a trap, guys, just for the content purpose. We're going to make these uh, a little bit trappy. Let's see. Now I think maybe the E is why it's like best move. But I'm going to be making it as trappy as I can. <laughs> Okay, we see a3. Now, the trap was if he goes fe, I wanted queen h4, g3, queen e4, because the knight was trapped, so he's avoiding that, but still we can simply take. Queen a5 would be a move to hit the weak pawn. Mm, could also just play knight f6, could take on d4. Mm, bishop f5 comes to mind as well. I think queen a5 is... It's like a good move in this type of structure and maybe not the most accurate in this uh, specific position, but uh, it's quite thematic. If d e5, then queen c3 and queen e5, picking up both pawns. C queen e2, which is very much expected. Just knight f6 and now d e5, there is queen takes back. If f e, there is knight takes. So we do get to keep the extra pawn and get quite a promising position. Might be wrong, but this does look uh, quite good for us. Very hard to steal. Uh, no, just uh, finish development for white. Very uncomfortable position to play. Much easier it feels for black, just getting hassled and, and then, you know, just... Could start simply breaking in the center. Is this title Tuesday? No, Navi. Now we're actually doing the video that we planned with like the six move checkmates and I'm just playing some viewers in the fantasy. So in the first part, I'm going to be explaining like the trap, sort of like Gotham does it. And in the second part, I'm playing the viewers. So see, I I'm learning. I'm learning from the, <laughs> from the shit. Okay. Uh, White simply played Bishop to E2. My idea is that... Um, hmm. not sure really how he's willing to continue development. I'm gonna get castle and knight h3 still kind of, um, uh, yeah, dubious because of bishop takes. So I don't think white is actually willing to allow that. And other than this, we may very well just swing in the rook over, maybe, yeah. Just continuing with bishop f5, knight bd7. In the meantime, what is white gonna really do? <laughs> I feel like this is just uh, very uncomfortable. Um, maybe knight h3 is the best after all. Getting those ugly pawns, but at least like getting the open g file for the rook. So that could be something for sure. If not that, I mean, it's so tricky to play. Like, you cannot cast along because of a3, so we just see de. Probably gonna take back. I mean, there's a bishop d4 move, but I guess we don't really mind that much. We simply go back to e7. Not blocking other pieces. And he goes, pawn takes, inviting me to take with a knight, hitting the queen on d2. queen to d4 I could exchange queens go for the winning endgame that might be fairly instructive I could try to make my opponent's life harder and keep queens which is perhaps even better so I'm gonna do that just because I feel like the queen can really be a target in this situation with rook to d8 and so on so it's gonna do knight f3 but 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 look at this I mean it's gonna be like around move 15 and white is Desperately trying to finish development. 
Okay, he does that, hitting my knight. I can protect it with both rook e8 or bishop f5. I think I prefer bishop f5 just because um, I could potentially still hit the queen with rook d8. I like to keep that option to be a little bit more aggressive. Also, there might be queen h4 kind of motive in the future. g3, there's no knight g3 because the queen is on the fourth rank. But you've got to like at least consider these uh, type of things. See knight to f3. Uh, I can play c5 now, trying to hit the queen. I can also go rook to d8. I think I like rook to d8 more, just to get another piece involved into the action. And yeah, we're hitting the queen. C queen to b4. Once again, I think we're going to keep being annoying. Avoiding the queen trade. Gaining more time. Okay, what else is white going to try to do? Not so many queen squares available. <laughs> queen c4, knight d6. Maybe juicy, but there's queen f4. Saving the bishop. Okay, queen to b2. Now, I'm definitely looking for a deadly knight move. Like knight g3, hitting the rook. Oh, that is going to be so, so good content. Look at this. This is literally going in YouTube shorts and TikTok next. So, playing knight g3. Hitting the rook, opening up queen's path, expecting hg, queen e3, king f1, and then rook takes d3 is the brilliant move. I'm gonna be forcing checkmate. C takes, bishop takes, queen e2, bishop takes, king e1, bishop f3, king f1 only move, queen e2, king g1, queen takes g2, checkmate. That is forced. That is gonna happen, guys. Did I go to Hikaru mode there? I'm sure you can visualize this. I mean, you should. Are you even serious about your chess improvement if you're not visualizing this? Come on, guys. Come on. Stop being lazy. <laughs> Never mind. Opponent spoils all the content. Thank you for that. Just going to take the real quick check. But I'm going to show you this beautiful line uh, in the, in the post-game analysis. Uh, just going to be taking now, keeping it very simple, winning another pawn, winning the rook. Time to finish development. The only reason why I'm behind in development is because I have more pieces to develop, so that's not too bad. Bishop g5, pause the video, find a winning tactic. Can try to eliminate bishop's defender by taking on f3 with check, and uh, then there is queen g5, winning uh, two pieces for one rook, but we end up with the extra knight uh, at the end of the day, so it cannot be too bad. Let's give a check, forcing king f1. Does not uh, go to f1, but uh, also just realized I cannot take the rook because there will be queen 8 and I'm going to be getting back ring mated, which would be a little bit awkward. So just going to go rook d8. Not only hitting the rook, but uh, playing for checkmate, which I think is even better. Taking rook is perfectly fine. This was forcing mate. So we managed to get a win. Because the 1700. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And in case you're interested to perhaps learn more about the Karokan defense, I'd like to invite you to check out my rating climb that I did with the Karokan, where I'm taking a fresh account from 500 and getting it up all the way to 2500. So please click the video that will appear on the screen, and I will see you around on the channel. Take care.